Hello guys, welcome back to Martin Hot Not TV. So in today's video, I'd like to talk about Aero, Iceland's pop artist. So born in 1932 in Ulsvik, I think that's how we pronounce it, um, in Iceland on the 9th of July, 1932, uh, Gamundra Gomstad, Gomst, Gom, Gummenstun, I think, aka Ero, is best known for his pop art inspired by mass media, by the likes of comics, magazines, newspapers, and advertisements. So at the end of this video, I'd like to show you a book I purchased at Reykjavik Art Museum in Iceland showcasing his uh, work. So you're welcome to stick around for the end to, to see the book. As earlier this year I was in Iceland doing a artist residency and um, whilst I was there I had the opportunity to go to Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, and, uh, to, and we went to the um, Reykjavik Art Museum and it was there where I discovered Aero. Um, and his artwork. And so I thought I'd just do a video about this because his work really spoke to me and really kind of just captivated me. So where did he study? I found out he studied in Iceland at Reykjavik School of Visual Art in 1949. Um, and he was actually born in Iceland. But following this, he left Reykjavik to study engraving and fresco and painting at the Academy of Oslo in Norway in 1952. Um, and then he went on to travel through various European countries. And then eventually he settled down in Italy for a while in Florence where he studied the old masters and learned the technique of fresco painting, uh, which looks like it was at Florence Academy of Art in 1954. During his time in Italy, he also completed training at a mosaic school in Ravenna, <laughs> uh, Italy, in, uh, at which it looks like he was at school, at the school of, um, Byzantine Mosaic Art in 1955. And then Ero eventually went to settle in Paris in 1958. And um, he's been living there actually ever since. Um, which is interesting because by, by doing my research, it looks like he moved out of his home country to find new opportunities and to explore new ideas. Which is interesting because when I was in Iceland, I thought he was still living in Iceland because so much of his work is at this museum. Um, but apparently that's not the case. And I remember talking to a member of staff at the museum and she was saying, yes, he's, you know, he's well known in Iceland, but he does not live here. He actually lives in, in France and being doing most of his work outside of his home country. Yeah, so it seems like only recently that his work has been, has become more accepted in his home country. Maybe not too recently, but recently in the grand kind of scheme of things, I guess. So that's like, that's a rundown of like some of the places where he studied. Um, so where did his career begin? So he began his career in the mid 1950s painting figures and um, and you can see some of the work I'll show you in the book that I purchased over there from Iceland and his early works were shaped by uh, various crises or crises happening in the world at the time um, including the Algerian war and you know the shadow of the cold war and the second Arab Israel war uh, so that was all going on when he was, you know, starting his career and creating, uh, creating his work. So what inspires his, his main body of work that we often see today? 
So Aero is best known for his work in collage. Um, he uses imagery from a variety of popular sources, including advertisements, newspaper, comics, and posters. Uh, what he generally does first is assemble the collages to create his visual ideas. Then he uses these designs to inspire the creations of paintings. And um, I saw this firsthand when I went to Reykjavik Art Museum uh, in Iceland uh, because it was interesting because he had um, some of his collage works displayed next to his paintings and so you could see how his collage works influenced his paintings because his paintings were more fine art you know because they were made using you know whether that was acrylic or oils on canvas but what he did was copy the collages yeah and then copied that collage to turn into a painting so it was really interesting seeing those pieces side by side the the collage the design the idea and then seeing the finished painting that was like a representation of that collage but in painting and seeing how those two pieces like related to each other. But I think for me, what I found was when seeing his artwork at Reykjavik Art Museum is that what I found was that um, he had all this kind of visual imagery that was like an amalgamation representing different cultures, uh, historical or political moments in time uh, cartoons and references to classical uh, European paintings. And that's, a, that's another interesting thing because he, he likes to fuse, seems like he had some fusion of like classical European style uh, figurative painting type imagery, like working its way into his like, um, into his paintings, you know, so you'd have a mix of these European figures blended within like historical or kind of, you know, modern day historical imagery. Um, so for example, like classical figures from paintings, from European paintings kind of amalgamated into imagery of like, um, of the Apollo mission, imagery of the Apollo mission that went to the moon, uh, the astronauts that participated in that. So it was, it was really, it's like this kind of contrasting imagery between like the old and the more recent, kind of like taken out of context, but to create new meaning. But some of his paintings looked, um, appeared more kind of cartoon-like in appearance, whereas others was more kind of fine art in nature. So it seems like he has two bodies of work. You know, I found his art to be quite humorous um, and yet reflecting humanity and our history. And then there's also imagery reflecting war and human behavior. And his works makes me reflect on the past, but also think about the future. I think that's what really captivated me about his work is that I was not only really thinking about the past, but thinking about the future. And in some sense, his work is quite visionary. It's quite, um, it's not just like existing in the past, but existing in the present. And I kind of think that his work will still be relevant in like decades to come. But yeah, I mean, another characteristic that makes up his work is, you know, colourful and chaotic and contemplative. And I feel Eero is like a communicator, so because he seems to be using his artworks to communicate aspects of the world around us. And maybe his time travelling and working in other countries helped to shape his art. You know, apparently he travelled to New York for the first time in 1962 to get to know the art scene where he also met pop artists. Um, and maybe this is why his most popular work has a pop art kind of style to it. And, um, and people who define, define pop art usually define it as being imagery from popular 
and mass culture. And um, so that's why, you know, he has this kind of people generally label his work as being pop art. It's, you know, it's interesting, you know, thinking about it for myself, thinking about his artworks for myself, for myself, it's interesting thinking that how visual mass media from newspapers, magazines and video such as TV shapes who we are today. You know, I often think in today's world we're like oversaturated with imagery, with things that happen in the world, whether it's flooding in through TV or through the radio or through internet or even through things like this, like YouTube videos. You know, it's all visual imagery that kind of saturates in some way our our brains and how we perceive the world. And um, and I think Ero really you know caught onto this, and at the time was realised how powerful like these types of imagery can be, and how this affects our a view on the world and I think he was really kind of like tapping into this for some of his works you know obviously going back to depicting you know historical events but he, he, he kind of puts a spin on these things and creates new meaning from it so it's almost like he's just commenting on those things that had happened yeah so if you like this video and would like to watch more videos like this you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. My name is Martin Harmon. I'm an artist based in the UK. And in this channel, you will find videos ranging from educational art related topics, my views about the art world, the making of my artworks, art movies, and much more. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified about future videos when I post them. And now I'm going to show you the book that I purchased at Reykjavik Art Museum in Iceland. So I purchased this um, after viewing his work on display. But yeah, as you can see, it's, you know, he does do a lot of kind of cartoon type imagery. And um, um, so it is really colourful. But, you know, he also did some like sculpture as well. Um, and that's Arrow. But also it's just fascinating, like the amount of detail. But yeah, this is like some of his later works. And he also did some ceramic tiles and, and he has a big ceramic mural at the, um, at the main uh, city airport in Reykjavik. Uh, there's a big Muro ceramic mural there, um, which is also really interesting to see if uh, if you're in that area. Yeah, just like going back, like see, so you, you know, he plays upon like um, historical events and then kind of combines that with like other mass culture, mass media type imagery. I was amazed when I discovered Aero's art, Aero's art for the first time. Um, you know, I just couldn't believe that I had not seen his work before because it really just took my breath away because of the detail, the quality, um, the meaning behind the work, its uniqueness, its reference to historical events 
and its ability to transcend the past and to get me thinking about the present and the future. And there, there is not a lot of artwork I see that kind of makes me think about the past, present and future in that way. It's very, um, imagine like the Oracle, you know, some like person foretelling the future and saying in the future is going to be X, Y and Z. And it's like this artist is, is not only portraying the past, but he's kind of like del delving into the potential of the future within his work. That's, that's the impression I get from looking at his work. It's like, it's like I'm d delving into the future, future possibilities. It's, it's very strange. It's, it's very, um, me it's meaningful. It's thought provoking, but it's very, it's quite eerie at the same time. Yeah. And it just made me think deeply about the world I'm living in. So it's artists like Arrow that make me realize how important artists are. They're not only creating one-off unique artworks, but the technical aesthetic achievement also reflects human potential and the desire to create an artwork to stand the test of time. And I believe, you know, it's artworks like Arrows, it's artworks of today that will be just as important or if not more in many years to come. And that's what's so fascinating about art is that it transcends time. And there's not many other things. I feel there are some things, but not many things I feel that can do that, that you can preserve something into many, many years to come and still be relevant. But I'll leave it, I'll leave this video on that because I think that is a really important feature and inspiring aspect to art. And that's what I realized when looking at Eros art. So what do you guys think? Have you seen Eros art before in real life? And what did you think of it? It'd be interesting to know what you thought or what you make of it in the comments below. So if you like this video, I can recommend watching my top five living ceramic artists. And I'll put that one at the end of this one. Anyway, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've got something out of it. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.